so for them. Let's say um, this is going to basically be a, a discussion on non-sequential counters. Uh, basically state engines. Basically you need a count sequence that doesn't count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but some sort of unusual pattern of numbers that's developed by you for some sort of specific reason. So what we're going to talk about is how to develop that and get the logic for it and write that into a JK uh, counter mechanism so you can get what you need uh, for whatever project you want to do. So say for instance, I don't know, I'm just going to pull random numbers, 3-bit numbers. Uh, you want to go 0, 0, 0 and then your JK flip-flop uh, needs to change this state to 0, 1, 1, then 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, and then back to 0. Okay, so this, is, this seems simple enough for states but we want to develop a counter to do this off based on JK flip-flops. Okay, so first off, um, again, I am assuming that you do have a basic knowledge of JK counters because I'm going to just state the fact that since we have three bits, we're going to need three JK flip-flops. I mentioned before that we have three bits, so we're going to need three JKs. So I'm going to begin to create a basic diagram here. All right, we've got JK number one here. We'll give it Q and Q naught. I'm leaving off the asynchronous inputs because we're not going to utilize them unless we need some more to, unless you need some sort of other specific design, but we shouldn't need them here in this case. We want to grab, we can break, but if not, they're off. So the asynchronous inputs, I'm leaving off, that's preset and clear. And we're just going to stick the JK in the clock as far as controlling Q and Q naught. All right. All right, so I've got three JK flip-flops for three bits. All right, the problem that we encounter, I say it's a problem, but this is the dilemma that we're going to overcome. All right, for all of these Q outputs, each of these Q outputs is going to drive a bit. The Q0, just because of, you know, what we learned off of asynchronous counters, sequential counters, the LSB is always on the first stage. So I'm just going to keep that here. I, I don't really think it matters because... We're going to build the logic based on the bits that we need to change, but I'm just going to say this is going to be Q0, and up here I'll call this Q0. That I don't think is as important as long as you stay consistent. All right, so that's Q0, Q1, Q2. And Qs are just my outputs. I put uh, numbers behind them because I have three Q outputs, 0, 1, 2. I'm a binary head. So when I count, I always start at zero. I'm a programmer. That's how it starts. Zero, and then you go on. So Q0, Q1, Q2. All right. So here's the idea. We've got three outputs, but we've got to make them do that. So we have to figure out what type of logic we need to fi uh, filter in, send in to J0, K0, J1, and I'm just still in the number at the end of Q, K1. J2 and K2. So we have to figure out what type of logic we need to feed into the J's and into the K's to get them to do what we want to do for these four states and then just continue to rotate. So what we have to figure out in, in the next lesson when we talk about the operation of the JK, talk about transition table, we're going to answer these questions. We've got to figure out what it's going to take to change Q0 to a 1, Q1 to a 1 on the first plot pulse and then Q0 to a 0, Q1 must stay a 1, but this Q2 has to become a 1. So we're going to really scrutinize what's happening as we go from state to state so that we can develop a JK flip-flop that's going to give us the precise pattern. Okay? Any uh, questions on that, uh, you can leave a comment in the thread, uh, YouTube, or on the website, however, and uh, that will come to my email. I will get it. I'll respond.